Hey everybody, Jeff Schneider here, and today we're gonna do a great exercise for improving your soloing. I'm gonna get right to it. It's called the sing, sing, play exercise. You're gonna sing a phrase, then you're gonna sing it again, and then you're gonna play it on your instrument. I'm gonna demonstrate over a backing track. It's just a D minor vamp. You don't have to do a D minor vamp. You can choose any looped progression, like a, a two, five, one. You just wanna make sure it's looped so that you sing it, you sing it again, and then you play it, and the chords are the same each time around. So here's the vamp. Ba 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 do bu ba 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 do bu da ba ba. So let me first explain why it's so important to sing the phrase twice before you play it. The first time you sing it, there's a really good chance that some of the notes will lack center. They won't be in tune. They'll be a little wishy-washy. You know, like, duh, you know, you're, you're sort of finding it. You're finding your footing. It's not solid. So you sing it again, and it's amazing how if you sing the same thing twice, that second time, the notes are so much more dialed in. What that's doing is it's not a vocal exercise. It's to get your ear to be more locked into what you're trying to, to do. It's like rehearsing. <laughs> It's like practicing. So you sing it, you sing it again, and then you play it. Now that process of being able to play it requires you to do a bit of transcription. So you're transcribing that which you're singing. Now that's a complicated step depending on the line that you sing. So if you sing something really complicated, obviously that's gonna be harder to figure out what the notes are. So if you're just starting out with this and you're not so solid on building that connection between your ear and the notes that you're playing on your instrument, start with something simple like, um, very easy. It's just going up and down the scale. Or even simpler than that. Just one note. That's fine too. If you're constantly messing it up and not able to either sing it clearly that second time or you're just you're having a really difficult time figuring out what the notes are on your instrument, just simplify the line to begin with. Now the other thing that you want to do is break down that process even more so. Meaning when you hear the note, let's say we do um Ba 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 de ba do. I'll sing it again. Ba 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 be ba bo. Now I want to figure out what those notes are. My process is, and this is sort of, um, I do this subconsciously, but I'm going to break it down into a more conscious step by step method here. So first, I, I hear the the sound. Ba 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 de ba bo. That's just sound. Then I convert the sound into numbers. So I know this is the one. So it's one one two three two one. Then you have the formula and you can take whatever scale or key you're in and use that formula and apply it to the to the music theory. So for in D minor, one, one, two, three, two, one is D, D, E, F, E, D. This is why it's so helpful to know your scales. And I can play it right the first time. By the way, if you want to download these chord scale charts, you can get them for free at the link in the description below. I have them in every key and they make understanding and learning your scales and chords so much easier. What you don't want to do is hunt and fish for the notes on your instrument. Don't be a button pusher. You wanna figure it out in your head before you actually play it. Maybe that means you need to give yourself more time. I know when I did the demo earlier, there wasn't a lot of space between my two singing takes and the playing take, but you can leave space. You can take some time to figure out, okay, what notes am I singing? What are the numbers? And then figure out what are the note names, the letter names that go with those numbers. Take your time if you need to. Eventually, you'll close the gap and you'll be able to do it instantaneously. Now, another thing I want you to keep in mind when you're working on this exercise is to remember you don't always have to come up with something super fresh and hip and new. Like if it's a lick that you learned a long time ago and you wanna sing that, that's fine. Even if you know what the notes are in advance. Remember, we're just trying to establish a stronger connection between your, your ear and your hands. And whatever you can do to fortify that connection is great. And then you can work on fresher, newer ideas once you have that connection flowing. So for instance, if you learn the lick like ba ba be bo ba bo do de do da do, I sang it twice to really dial it in. Play it on the keyboard here. Be bo bo be bo ba da 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 da. Take your time. You can you can go back and forth like that when you're practicing just to make sure you're you're singing it in tune, it's so important. Because if you're not singing it in tune, you're not hearing it in tune, and then it's gonna be, it's just gonna cause so many problems. It's just gonna make it, it's gonna make it harder on yourself. Don't, don't make it harder on yourself. I'll do a couple more demonstrations in just a second, but let me give you another idea for how to practice this if you have a partner or a few buddies around. You can go around in a circle and somebody can sing 
the phrase. So, you know, person A sings the phrase twice and then person B plays it. Then person B sings a new phrase twice and person C plays it. We'll do a couple more in D minor and then we'll call it a day. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Again. On the keys. Again. So that's five, four, three, two, four, three, six. So in that last one, I broke it down into the individual steps, which is totally fine. There's no like right or wrong way to do this, except, well, that's not entirely true. The wrong way is, as I said before, is to be a button pusher and guess what the notes are instead of figuring out what they are in your head. It's all about mental math here. You wanna do the work in your head, figure it out before you touch your instrument, and then you can play it right the first time. And obviously that's important when it comes to playing in a real situation because you wanna do it right. You wanna do it right the first time. Anyway, if you want to check out more of my videos, I've got a good one linked right up here, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye.